Hello there, YouTubers. Hey, I'm starting a new weaving project. It's, it's been a while since I've done a video on a weaving project. It's been a while since I've done any kind of video. Um, this is going to be kind of a small test project, and I'm using a smaller loom. Um, this one, uh, which I will show you a little bit more of in just a second. Let me first uh, describe the project. My intention is to do a double weave, double width. Uh, blanket. And I'm eventually going to do one on my larger loom, but for the purpose of practicing, testing um, what size yarn I want to use, uh, what dent reed I want to use, and how I want to set this up, and if I can get the the fold correct, and you'll see what, the, what I mean by that in a minute, I'm going to first do a small test project on my small Ashford table loom just to, to give myself kind of a, a, a miniature test project on this before I uh, expend a, a lot of uh, yarn to do a full-size project. So, <coughs> excuse me, the, the warp on this project is only one and a half yards long and I figure I'm only going to get, you know, 15 inches of length of weave out of this, but that will be enough to prove the point uh, whether or not I can make this do what I want it to. And the uh, the width of this project in the reed is less than a foot, but because it's intended to be double width, it will unfold to be 18 or 20 inches wide, um, hopefully. That's the intention. Let's take a look at uh, my Ashford loom. Um, all the, the other weaving videos I think I've done have um, have shown you my Louette Spring loom, which is my big loom. Um, there's a few older videos that have some still pictures of the Ashford, but um, there's nothing that shows the Ashford uh, being used. So I'm going to move the camera just a little bit and show you the back of this loom because I'm sitting behind it right now. And then I'll take the camera around to the front. So there's the back of the Ashford loom. <coughs> I've got some stuff sitting here. Um, you can see the, the shaft. This is an 8 shaft table loom. Uh, there are no treadles. It's uh, direct or when I do my planning I, I do what's called a lift plan with this. So now let's uh, move around to the front of the loom. Okay, here I am sitting in front of the Ashford loom. I'm going to have to take another picture a little bit farther away to give you a, a bigger view of this loom, but uh, just a quickie view. Right now I've got the the beater bar kind of held out into an open position, into a steady position out in the front. It doesn't go back all the way right now. Um, on this loom there are Instead of treadles, I have eight levers. Each lever can go up and down and can control one shaft. So there's lever one, and maybe you can see right here I can, I'm raising up one shaft. So shaft lever two controls shaft two, three, shaft three, and all my Levers, I've just got numbers stuck onto them, so it just helps me spot them easier when I'm sitting here. Um, the loom is not yet fully threaded. Um, with this loom, I prefer to warp front to back, so I first put my, um, my in this case, my very short warp through the reed, and then I go around to the back of the loom, and I pull through uh, pull the threads through the heddles. Um, to me, with this loom, it's easier to do it that way. There isn't really room to put lee sticks on the back of here. There's no place for a, a, a decent rattle on here, um, like the one that I've got built on the Louette. Um, so, this loom just works better this way. And it is, it's a smaller loom. It's foldable, so it's sort of portable semi-portable, you know, it's more like a luggable. Um, but it's great for doing small test projects. 
and um, it was my main loom for a number of years until I bought the uh, Louette. So that's this loom. Like I said, the project I'm working on is going to be double weave, double width. And what I'm going to do for that is try and show you some, some pictures that I drew on the computer to explain that process. There's no doubt that some of you who are non-weavers won't, um, it won't make sense to you no matter what I do. Okay, but it's worth a try. Maybe suddenly the light will go on and it'll click in your head. I must admit, double weave did not make sense to me at first. Um, but I've finally learned how to do it. But this is the first time I'm doing a double width. I've done other double weave projects. So, let's take a look at the, 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 the pictures I drew in Windows Paint uh, to try to explain double weave, double width, and um, give you an idea of what this project will be when I finish threading up this loom and actually start doing the weaving on it. Well, as uh, hopefully you can see, I'm threading um, this uh, small loom for this uh, sample project that I'm going to be doing. And um, since this is double weave, as I think I mentioned earlier, I've got twice as many threads per inch as one might expect me to have with this size yarn that I've got here, which by the way is the Shetland weight yarn from Harrisville Designs. And um, the basic pattern that I'm using is something called Summer and Winter. Now in Summer and Winter it's a block design that is normally made up of um, four threads per block. Usually in a pattern of 1323, 1323, so each 1323 is a block. Now if you want a two block pattern, like a block A and B, um, 1323 would be block A, <coughs> then 1424 would be block B. Here is the drawdown, and if you look, to look just at the top of this, you can see that I've set it up so that the block A, which is represented with yellow, is 1323, 1323, three, reading from right to left. And block B, represented by the green, is 1424, 1424. So that's the pattern that I have used in the warp. And that allows you the ability to have both a um, pattern and a tabby plain weave uh, setup. So because I'm doing double weave, I'm doing um, more than instead of one three two three, I'm doing the one three two three or the one four two four, but I'm also doing the same thing again on um, shafts 5 through 8. So that's why you can see me using all 8 shafts on this loom for um, threading right now. And yes, this is the putsy part of it. And Again, I'm sitting at the back of the loom to do this, not at the front of the loom, as I would be if I were um, do, using the other loom, using my louette, or some people would call it louette. 
L O U E T. But um, like I said, for for the Ashford, it works much better for me to work from the back. So these are the threads for five for this, and I'm basically since you've been watching me and with these two threads here this will comprise one block on both the top and bottom layer and just to um, help me keep track of where I am after I get a block finished I kind of take the comb pull them out a little bit and tie just a temporary slip knot there's one block done of four threads. And so I don't lose my place in the pattern, I'll just mark it off on my sheet. Anyways, that's, let's raise you up a little bit. That's uh, what I'm doing for threading this little loom. Like I said, it's, uh, this is an experiment. It, it might turn out that I put this video up and say, well, um, it looks like it's going good and the next video might come out and I say, well, I tore the whole thing apart because none of it worked. Because I've not tried this before. I've not tried uh, doing a complex pattern of uh, double, double weave, double width before. So we'll see how it works. Just an update for uh, what I'm working on. Here's the first of my pictures, and it's uh, it's basically just two rows of dots. The top row is black dots, the bottom row is blue dots. Now these were hand-drawn and hand-entered, so they're in the computer, so they may not line up perfectly as I cycle through these pictures. But let's imagine that each of these dots represents a warp thread in my project. And we're looking at these warp threads straight on from the end of each thread. Now let's imagine we start weaving through these threads, the warp threads, with a weft thread. And I'm representing the weft thread with a red line. Okay, so you can see it's beginning to weave through from the right to the left, just weaving back and forth with creating the, the layer of cloth. Think of me throwing the shuttle across the loom. And that's what you're seeing here with this red thread going across the top layer only at this point of the material. And when we get to the end, we're going to move down and st start weaving on the bottom. Now the weft thread is weaving from left to right across the bottom layer of the cloth. Um, so in this case we've raised the top set of warp threads out of the way and we're just weaving on the bottom and weaving from left to right across the bottom layer of our cloth with our red weft thread. And we're just about out on the right side. Now here, for illustration purposes only, I'm changing the weft color from red to green, and we're going to weave from right to left across the bottom of our two layers on the loom. And you can see that the, the green thread is weaving its way back across. And um, that's in effect. Now we've created a full weave across the bottom layer of our cloth. At this point, the green thread is going to start weaving back on the top layer, and it's now weaving from left to right. And so you can see that uh, what we've got is a piece of cloth that is connected by its weft threads in this case, on the left-hand side of the drawing. 
and you can imagine that the red and green are really the same color, but for illustrative purposes, I'm using two colors in this drawing. So there we are, one full piece of cloth, double the width. Let's now imagine that we take the cloth off of the loom, and it's at two layers, and we unfold it at that point where it was, where the threads went from the top to the bottom layer and back and forth. As we unfold the cloth, it moves and we end up with a single piece of cloth that is twice as wide as it was on the loom. Okay, uh, I've just shown you the my very poorly drawn um, pictures of how the uh, the weft is going to go through the two layers of warp um, to form uh, a piece that can effectively do this when it comes off the loom. So you'll be weaving two layers, just like my hands are two layers now, two layers, but they'll be joined at one side and unfold like that to one layer. Um, I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, especially from the combination of showing it with my hands and showing it to you the way I've done that little computerized drawing. So now let's take a look at the um, the loom that I'm using. And again, this isn't the loom that I've usually been showing you. This is my my table loom, my Ashford table loom. Now what I've done is I've set it up, and I've already started weaving this now because I wanted to be sure that it worked before I put it on, on here. I didn't want to have a massive failure to show up. What I've got is I've got it set so that shafts 1, 2, 3, and 4 represent the top layer. So if you look there you can see I've pulled 1, 2, 3, and 4. I've pulled the levers down which means that the, the, the shafts or the heddles get pulled up. And if I take this shuttle, you can see that I can put the shuttle in between, get my arm out the way, and I don't know if you'll see it, but I can come right back through the area that I've been weaving, and it's two layers, two full layers. Let's move you over a little bit closer. So right here, I've got the top layer and the bottom layer, and in between there, perfectly open. So that's shaft 1, 2, 3, and 4. Do that. Now let's pretend for a moment or two that I'm going to be just weaving a top layer cloth or a single layer of cloth. If I, and the pattern that I'm using is something called summer and winter. And in summer and winter for those of you who are not weavers, what that means is I can get a cloth that has a mirror effect top and bottom. So what that means is that I'm going to, my treadling, I don't have treadles, I don't have tie-ups like I did, I'm using what's called direct tie-up or a lift plan here. So the first, it's a four thread block to, to, to come out to do this. So I'm going to first raise shafts one and two, throw up uh, the shuttle across. And I'll do that with my background color, which in this case is gray. The next time I do it, it's going to be shafts one and three. Now the one and, let's go back, the one and two effectively gets me a tabby weave. Okay, so every second thread of the top layer, or if it were a single layer, would be raised. Every second thread. By doing one and three, I get every second thread on top, but I've got alternating threads going th through shaft three and four. So I get an open spot and a not so open spot. Next time around, I'm going to do three and four. Again, that's a tabby layer, and then I'm going to do 
two and four. Now here is the uh, pattern for just the lift plan or the treadling, if you will. And in this case, I'm just going to put the red around those four threads that make up block A. And you can see that my uh, lift plan again is one, two, then one, three, then three, four, and finally two, three, not two, four as I originally said. And what that gets me down here, if you can see it, is that I've got blocks where I've got the gold showing more and then the gray showing more. So that's the top layer. The same thing I'm doing on the bottom layer. So on the bottom layer, it's 5 and 6, then 5 and 7, then 7 and 8, then 6 and 7. Okay. The problem is when you're doing the bottom layer, you've got to have all of the top layer moved out of the way. So all of the top layer is moved out of the way by lifting, by pulling the levers down, which lifts the layer up. So it's 5 and 6, 5 and 7, 7 and 8, 6 and 7. That's the bottom layer. But I can't do a full layer at a time like that. I have to alternate my threads because I have to because remember I want to go over and around and come back. Go over around and come back. So it gets a bit more complicated. I'm going to move the camera and show you one set as I actually weave it. All right, let's actually try weaving. This the first thing we're going to do is a top layer tabby, gray. So that's shafts one and two. We come over. And I'm not going to beat real hard. I'm just going to pull in close. The next thing I want to do is go back and do the bottom layer. So I finish this row in effect after it's after the unwind ends. So I'll go through and I have to go under this gold thread so that I don't get them twisted and tie my two layers together. So in effect I've gone over and back with my gray. Okay now we're going to do an over and back with the gold which is my pattern weft. So that's one and three down and we're doing the top layer and pull that tight. Now we need to do the bottom layer so we pull all of one, two, three, four down and then we want five and seven for the bottom layer pattern. Come out, set the shuttle down, pull it close. Now we're going to do the bottom layer going back of the tabby. And for that we need seven and eight down. So we pull eight down and put five up. We've still got one, two, three, four down, so we're so the top layer is lifted out of the way, seven and eight shafts have been pulled up because I pulled the levers down and we take the gray for tabby make sure I'm going to the right place and go through there that's the bottom layer and now to do the top layer we're going to go three four Now we do the bottom layer pattern. So to do bottom layer, one, two, three, four levers are in the down position, which means that the cloth is in the up position. 
and we want 6 and 7 for the pattern. And again, make sure that we don't tangle the threads on the side here, which I didn't do. That's good. Pull that in tight. And now we're going to go back across the top. So get rid of those, and we want 2 and 3. And that is a single set of the pattern. And if, and if we went back and forth eight times, but because we're doing two layers and unfolding, effectively we did four threads, four weft threads. And I'm going to move the camera in a little bit closer so you can actually see that. And I've changed the blocks just so you can see the pattern a little better. Let's just zoom in. So hopefully you can see here those two gold threads sitting on top of the gray at this point here. I had a block here. So this is my A block. This is my B block. Now I'm doing A again. And so I've got gray not showing very well, or just gray showing there. The gold showing. Gray, gold, gray, gold, gray, gold. So there's one set of or one block of the um, summer winter done in uh, double weave double width. Alright, I think what I'm going to do is end this video now. Um, there's, there's more to do on this project, but I don't want the video to become ridiculously long and I'll probably end up doing a second video to finish this off. So that's enough for now just to give you the concept of what I'm doing with a double weave, double width. And this again is not my going to be my finished product. This is a sampler project that I'm doing to help myself wrap my brain around the needed techniques. My goal in this is to perfect my technique on this table loom and, th and with a, a relatively small amount of yarn. And relatively. And then once I've got the technique down and I feel comfortable with what I'm doing, I'm going to do a much bigger project on the other loom and try and make a blanket that will be 70 or 80 inches wide by maybe 104 inches long or something like that. So basically it should cover easily cover a double bed. Um, but I, before I spend the, the money to buy the necessary amount of yarn to do that, I want to be sure that I've got the process done in my head, that I understand what I'm doing on a small project. So this is my sampler project. I'll show this to you when it gets done and off the loom, and then we'll do a totally separate set of videos on the bigger blanket. That's it for now. If you like my videos, especially the weaving videos, I'd appreciate you subscribing to my channel. If you're already a subscriber, thanks a million for being there for me. Bye-bye for now.